Hello, and welcome to the directional video for the Scaling of the Solar System Lab, a lab that you can do at home with everyday objects. All right, well, I'm at home in my home office, and my lab assistant, also my daughter, is going to measure the diagonal length of this room, because this room here is going to represent the sun. This is our office, as I said, and the diagonal length from corner to corner will be the sun, specifically the, di the diameter of the sun. All right, so go ahead and stretch out that tape measure. Now, if you don't have a tape measure at home, you can use like a ruler and just have lengths of string that are equal to one length of the ruler. Essentially make your own tape measure. But hopefully you have a tape measure you can borrow or get your hands on. All right, so she's just extending the tape measure all the way across the diameter. So we're imagining that this whole room is encompassed by a big circle or a, actually a sphere and that's the sun. Okay, and we're just measuring the, the length all the way across. All right. Great job, assistant. And when my assistant gets the tape measure all the way extended to the other corner of the room, we're going to read the number off the tape measure. Now you wanna do everything in centimeters. If you look at the lab handout, you'll see that it is all based on centimeters. So don't read the inches, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and head over there to take a look at the, the measurement. All right, now you don't have to be really careful and accurate here. The purpose of this lab isn't to get perfect, you know, some you know, really nice scaled system. Instead, it's just to get an appreciation for the relative sizes. So looking here, we want, again, we want centimeters. And we see there's 510 is the red number, but then it goes up to nine, right, right by the end. So we'll say it's 519 centimeters. Okay, excellent. So now, yes, you can go ahead and retract the tape measure. We will not need it anymore. Okay, so I have a piece of paper here ready. In the second part of this video, if you stay tuned, I'll show more detailed calculations on the computer, um, as well as having the lab hand app open, going through each of the questions in the analysis part of the lab. And I'll show especially how to do the part where you're going to overlay circles on top of a, um, a Google satellite image. But for now, let's just do an estimate to kind of get an idea about what we're doing here. So we just got our size of the room, okay? Because that represents the sun. So we're gonna go ahead and write right here, 500, and talking about estimates, we'll write 520. Okay, we'll go ahead and put units on that. So centimeters. Okay. So 520 centimeters is the size of the room representing the sun. Okay. So that means all we have left to do is solve for the size of the model Earth. Because we know the real size of the sun, it's 1,392,000 kilometers. Okay, approximately. And we know the real size of the Earth, it's 12,756 kilometers. Yeah, the Earth's big, but it's a lot smaller than the Sun, okay? How much smaller? Well, you know, you could do this division and get an idea, but does that really kind of get, give you a feel for it? Not really, right? So let's go ahead and write in the 520 centimeters right here, and I'll tell you why. Because I've set up a ratio that will allow us to mathematically solve for the size of the model Earth. So essentially, we have two real things, sun and earth, okay? That's gonna be on this side, okay? As a ratio, one over the other, division. And that ratio is equal to the ratio of the models. That's how you make a scale model system, just like someone would make a scale model system of trains. If you ever hear about models, they often talk about the scale factor. What, how big are your models? Are they 1 30th size, okay? Or so on. So that means that we just have one unknown in this equation, the size of the model earth. And if we go ahead and do that, we would want to actually solve for this. Now the best way to solve for it is probably algebraically do some cross multiplication, move things around. And when you do, okay, you're gonna end up on the left-hand side, taking that 1,392,000 divided by the 12,756, that gives you about 109. So essentially, in terms of linear length, um, in terms of diameter, the sun is about 110 times bigger than the Earth, okay? Well, that means that any model of the Earth is gonna to need to be 110 times smaller than this room. Okay, well, what's something that's 110 times smaller than 520 centimeters? Well, it is something that's about 4.77 centimeters. So I already did the calculation here with this basic um, calculator. There we go, get an easier view of it. 
right? So that, that would still be in centimeters. And ahead of time, we found something that is about that size, an everyday object we found in our office. Lab assistant, do you want to show us? Yes. Okay. Uh-huh. There you go. Something that's just under five centimeters. It's circular, which is the best case. You know, if, you, if you want to find things that represent your planets, having them be circles is a little bit more believable. I think it'll make the lab more interesting. Nice job there. Okay. So this roll of tape is from edge to edge about the scaled size of the Earth if this whole room represents the sun. And it really gives you an idea. May I take it? Because if we put it in the middle of the room, oh, and it rolls away from us, we really get an idea of how small it is, right? Because we have this huge, vast room, which in this case, we kind of are just thinking of as a flat floor. But of course, the sun is three-dimensional, right? This is this huge sphere. And the Earth is just this tiny little sphere, right? So much smaller. In fact, to say that the Earth is one hundredth across is the same as saying that it's one millionth the volume, because a hundred cubed is a million. Ah, something to think about, huh? So please stay tuned for the rest of the lab, and we'll talk in more detail about, detail about the further questions and calculations. Okay, so now that we've seen a little bit about how to make that initial measurement of your scaled sun, being the diagonal line of a room, as you saw me and my daughter doing, or I should say me and my lab assistant, well, now we can talk a little bit more about the lab itself. So here we are, right? Lab one, scaling of the solar system. All right. So, of course, you know, we already were doing the lab. We have to make that measurement. But that's all in service to questions four all the way down to the end with question 10. Um, I started question four because it's worth noting that questions one through three are considered the pre-lab as is um, described, oh, excuse me, questions one through four are considered the pre-lab as described up in the procedure. And that's all background information. Um, the links on the, the page, the assignment page, will give you some idea if you get stuck on any of these problems. But this is just considered a bit of a math review or, or maybe just a kind of a, a, a math practice, okay? So we get down here, all right? That's right, so question four is also, the table in four is not an actual table that's based on data. This is, at, since number four is part of the pre-lab, this is um, just based on scaling, okay? But not scaling off of you know a small model where the, the sun is represented by a room, but instead scaling everything off units that are particular to Earth. So in other words, thinking of all of the sizes of the planets and the sun itself, and Pluto, which is a dwarf, a dwarf planet, not an actual planet, in terms of the diameter of Earth. So essentially, we're, we're measuring things not in units of kil kilometers or meters, but instead, instead in a dimensionless quantity called just Earth size, okay? Earth diameters, relative diameter. And it's dimensionless because it's a ratio. So whatever were the units, like kilometers, of the diameter over the Earth diameter, they cancel out. So then, of course, since Earth is its own size, the ratio is exactly one. And likewise, with distances, the ratio is exactly one for Earth's distance. Now, Earth's distance from the sun is 149 million kilometers, which is equal to the astronomical unit. OK, this is a, a unit in, um, in astronomy. It's just it's an alternate um, unit to the kilometer. So it's based off of the metric system, but it's not base metric units. And if, we, if we're going to use that as a ratio, then we can come up with you know, these distances. And here, notice that we have two cells already filled in, the zero because, the, because all these distances are measured relative to the center of the sun. And so the sun is at its own center, so there's no distance. But then as we move out to the planets, starting with the closest planet, Mercury, Venus, and then Earth, and so on, then those distances are all going to be represented as fractions of Earth's average distance from the sun. I say average because all of the orbits are somewhat elliptical. They're not perfect circles. Um, the only one that's a, a, that is significantly elliptical is Mercury, but all the other ones are not perfect circles. Okay, so um, of course you will get different values here. If we kind of look, we can see that um, Mars, for example, is 228 million kilometers. Therefore, it's not tw not quite twice as far um, from the um, sun as Earth, but certainly is further. So if you wanted to fill in this cell here, you would just take the ratio of 228 over 149. Okay, but I won't show you that calculation because pre-lab, 
all right? Because it's the pre-lab and I want you to work on it yourself, I should say. Now, what I do want to talk about is number five, okay? Now, when in the first part of the video, um, you saw that we got a measurement of about 520 centimeters, okay? So we're gonna call that our model diameter. All right, so over here, I'm using a Desmos graphing calculator. And so I'm just gonna define a variable um, called D model, and I'm gonna call that 520. Actually, I'm gonna call it 0 0.520 because what I've done here is I've converted 520 centimeters into, uh, excuse me, 5.20, there we go. I've converted 520 centimeters into meters, okay? So what we found then is the diagonal length of the room, in my case, was 520 centimeters or 5.2 meters. The reason I wanna do that is because in order to get the, the scale factor, which is just so important for understanding the rest of the lab and really be, being able to kind of go through all the computations and not have to repeat your work every time, well, you need the model size and you need the actual size. But to have this ratio become a dimensionless quantity, because you need it to, you need to make sure that the units of the model size and the units of the actual size are the same. Okay, so they either both need to be kilometers or both need to be centimeters, or I think the most logical choice, have them both be meters, right? The standard base unit of distance in the metric system, okay? So then for D actual, this is the actual size of the sun. Well, let's think about it. So we have up in this table, we have that the sun, it has a diameter of 1,392,000 kilometers, but we don't want kilometers, we want meters. And that just means we add an extra three zeros because there are a thousand meters in a kilometer. So the actual size would be one, three, nine, two, okay? And then zero, zero, zero. So, so far that's in kilometers, but then to convert it, convert it to meters, just add three more zeros, okay? So again, the diameter of the sun was about 1.3 or rather 1.4 because the nine would round the three up to four. So we could say approximately the sun has a diameter of 1.4 million kilometers, which is equivalent to approximately 1.4 billion meters. See, from million to billion, a difference of a thousand, okay? A multiplicative difference of a thousand. So then our scale factor, um, which you can't uh, define things as two letters um, in Desmos. So we're just gonna call our scale factor S, okay? Uh, we can define subs subscripts though, so we could put SF like that, right? So our scale factor is just going to be D model over D actual, because it's just the ratio of those two measurements. As long as they're in the same units, it is as simple as that. So we'll put the D model up top, and then we're gonna divide by D actual. All right, so there we have it. This is our scale factor. Now your scale factor will not be exactly the same because your room size will not be exactly the same. Um, you know, certainly not. Um, I would expect it to be different, but what we have here is kind of the, the range. And so what I look at and what you should be thinking is your scale factor should be around 10 to the negative nine when it's written in scientific notation like this, okay? So that means it's a billionth. So essentially our model of the sun was about three billionths as big as the actual sun, right? So it's a, it's a pretty dramatic case of modeling. You know, when you build a model set of a, of a train, you know, your, mod, your, your scale factor is not nearly as dramatic. It might be, you know, 100 times smaller or something. But here it is, you know, a billion times smaller, or three, three billionths the size, okay? Um, now, you, the, the number you might get might be on the order of 10 to the negative 10, but it certainly is not going to be too far off, right? So if you get something that is, you know, that is 10 to the negative 6 or 10 to the negative 5, that would be an incorrect scale factor. Something went wrong with your calculation, okay? So I just wanted to show you a sample calculation there. Now, there's a few other things I'm going to touch on here in this lab. All right, here um, in question six, this refers to actually finding the objects that represent the planets. As you saw in the first part of the video, we were able to find a, um, an object that, that represented Earth pretty well. Um, I said that uh, when you did the calculations, which I, I didn't show in that first part of the video, um, that when you had the 520 centimeter or 5.2 meter model of the sun, the size of the Earth ended up being approximately equivalent to that roll of tape, which was just a little bit smaller than five centimeters, okay? So from 520 to five, okay? Which is what we should expect because the difference is about a hundred fold. The sun is about a hundred times bigger across than Earth. So now let's see how we could use the scale factor to get that same result and you know really show you the exact value. 
So what we do is we look at the size of Earth right here, its diameter, 12,756, okay? So I'm gonna call this D actual Earth, okay? So actual E, all right? So hopefully that will work well. And then, what is it? I'm getting an exclamation point. Um, yeah, I just want something after the equal sign. So I wanna make sure it was accepting the subscript. So then for the actual um, size of the Earth, we're just gonna put it down in um, so if we want it to be in meters, um, then, or, you know, so here, you know, if you're thinking about the actual size, notice that for the um, scaled size, it's in centimeters, all right? So keep that in mind. I'm going to get to centimeters, but watch how I do it, okay? So we'll start with kilometers here. So we'll put in 12,756, the actual size of the Earth in kilometers, all right? Now, Let's go ahead then and convert that to meters because we've done, we did that with our other two values. So, so far all of our values that are measurements are all in meters, so D, D, and D, okay? Scale factor, remember, no units. So we'll add the three zeros, okay? Three zeros, there we go. Okay, so we have that the, so, the diameter of the Earth is 1,275,000, uh, or sorry, 12,756,000, um, meters, okay? Which is the same as saying that it's 12,756 kilometers, okay? So about 12.8 million meters across. That's the size of Earth, okay? Twice its radius, because the diameter is twice the radius. Okay, so then how would I find the scaled size? Well, then I'd simply multiply the actual size by the scale factor. So D of the scale Earth is then just going to equal the scale factor okay, times the actual size. Now, what units is this gonna give me? It's gonna give me meters, okay? Which is, I think, pretty good because, like I said, all, all, everything here in Desmos has been in meters, so we have a good consistency here. But what's, what we have to do, what is, you know, so I, that's it, good consistency, easy to understand, but remember that when you put it in the table here, right, because we're talking about this column, all right, you know, because we've started with question five, we've moved beyond the pre-lab, actually using the data you get from, from your model, all right, well, then you need to convert that to centimeters, okay? Because it is asking for the value in centimeters. I ask for it in centimeters. So to do that, you simply have to multiply by 100. All right, so I'm not gonna um, define this as anything else, but I'm just gonna say 100 times that D scale value for Earth. So scale E, all right, and there we go. So that's, that's how you multiply from meters to centimeters. You multiply by 100. Basically, any other conversion involves multiplying by a thousand whenever you change from one metric scale, like a kilometer to a megameter, or a kilometer to a meter, or a millisecond to a second. Almost everything is in steps of a thousand, which is to say three orders of magnitude, because an order of magnitude is a factor of 10. The one notable exception is the centimeter. Remember, it's a hundred, right? There's a hundred centimeters in a meter. So there we have it. We have that the object that I needed to represent Earth had to be 4.77, if I round to that place right there. So we round up to 4.77, because the five would round the six up to a seven. That would be the size of our model Earth, and that's about the size of the tape that you saw before, right? The roll of tape, okay? Masking tape or uh, you know scotch tape, whatever it was, okay? So that's, that's what you're gonna do. You're just gonna keep putting in that, those scaled sizes, but what about the distances? All right, because you'll notice in question seven, it asks you to take a satellite image. So why is that? Why do we need a satellite image? Well, because it turns out that when we're building a scale model like this and we have the sun, you know, some five meters across or two meters across or three meters across, we have planets like Earth that are represented by, you know, everyday objects that are a few centimeters. And the larger planets, the gas giants, will be, you know, some tens of centimeters in size, maybe the size of like a, a ball or something, like a basketball. Um, for, you know, um, I don't know if that would be for the larger or the smaller uh, Jovian planets off the top of my head, but of course you'll be running those calculations yourself. But the distances are gonna be really quite different because the solar system, if we could, you know, see it from above, right, if we could get a bird's eye view of the solar system, uh, which would be a very long journey, much longer than uh, any spacecraft has ever taken, then we would, we would see that it's almost entirely empty space. There's just a few tiny planets that are very far from each other and relatively far from the sun. The sun is, is you know, big, you know, compared to all the planets. The sun actually makes up over 99% of the matter in the solar system, incredible. Um, but the, it's mostly just empty space. So vast distances, relatively small planets. 
And let, let me show, show you what I mean, because I think the scale is really gonna make this obvious. So let's go ahead and, and still focus on Earth. We have that the distance to, um, from the sun, from the center of the sun to the center of the Earth, the average distance, is 149 million units. That quantity that is equivalent to one astronomical unit. Okay, so let's go ahead and put this in. I'll use um, lowercase d for distances, just like I was using uppercase d for diameters. And we're gonna call this d actual. Okay, this is the actual distance from the sun to the Earth. And we'll just put it in and we'll do meters again. So we'll put in the 149, uh, okay, so 149. And then we need, as you can see, six zeros because it's 149 million. So one, two, three, okay, and then one, two, three. Now I could have done scientific notation, but I think it's kind of nice to see clearly 149 million, okay? So 149, no, no, no thousandths, all right, nothing in the hundreds or the tens or anything, okay? All right, so with that done, okay, we want to hit enter and then multiply it by our scale factor. It's as easy as that, okay? So you can see how once you have the scale factor, getting any of these scaled you know, sizes for the actual planets or the distances for the distances between them, I should say not the actual planets, but the, the model planets, and then the distances between those model planets, you just multiply by the scale factor every time. So we'll call this D model, okay? Remember this is the model distance from our model sun to model Earth. And it'll simply be D actual, and then multiplied by, you guessed it, since I just said it, the scaled factor, all right? So, okay, let's, let's think here though. Because one thing is I've got, think about the units, right? So I left this in kilometers. So we see here then, then what are the units, right? What are the, what are the units of this, right? Well, they'd actually be kilometers. Now, I think that that would be fine because Think about kind of the, 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 the rule I have been following. All of our diameters, whether they're you know, the real thing or the model, are all in meters, okay? Because you know, that's, that's kind of you know, consistent with the, with the sizes here. But if I was to you know, think about all these distances that are so much bigger, I might as well leave them in kilometers, okay? So I left the actual distance between the sun and the earth in kilometers. Therefore, when I multiply by the scale factor that doesn't have any units, I'm gonna get a model distance in kilometers. Okay, so acknowledge then that this, this answer here that Desmos gave us is not the final answer because what units in this column is, is the lab asking for? Well, meters, okay? And no, it's different, right? Because we, you know, I would expect, right, that the, your actual objects that you find that represent the planets will be, you know, on, on the scale of a few centimeters, like, like the one that I, that I ended up calculating, that was 4.77 um, um, centimeters, but your distances will be on the scale of kilometers, okay? So, you know, and well, meters at least. So then if I wanna convert this to meters, how do I do that? Well, I just take this model distance between the Earth and the Sun and multiply by a thousand, okay? Now I have the distance in meters. So I take that value of 556, it would round up to 557, and I drop that right in this column right, or this spot right here. All right, so right in this section, I would put 557, okay? So hopefully that makes sense, all right? 557 meters. And think about that, that's pretty remarkable. 557 meters is um, some um, 1,500 feet, right? It's half a kilometer, so uh, maybe about a third of a mile, right? A little less than a third of a mile. It's a pretty significant distance, all right? And that's just the distance between the sun and Earth. And think about it, right? The sun, size of a room, right? The earth, size of a little roll of tape, and in between, half a kilometer. That's, that's what I'm getting at when I say that the solar system is mostly empty space, okay? And I, I, hopefully, this lab will really drive that interesting fact home for you all, okay? Now we could do the same thing for the other planets, and the results just get more dramatic because you can see there's a big jump here as we go to the outer planets, right, the Jovian planets, because they start being really far apart. It has to do with the physics of how they formed and they collected in gas, so essentially the, the, the material that the, these planets were made from, they had to draw from a, a larger region of space to, you know, to make such large gas giants. And part of the reason they could get so big was because of the ability of, um, of water ice to freeze at that certain distance from the sun. So we see then that the distances between them really grow, right? Because I mean, look, there's, there's only about, 
um, you know, some 40 million kilometers between Venus and Earth, right? Um, but look at the distance between, say, Nept or, you know, Neptune and Pluto. Sure, Pluto, again, dwarf planet, not an actual planet. But look, it's over a thousand, right? Over a thousand million, a thousand million, which is a billion. So it's over a billion kilometers from Neptune to Pluto. And of course, that's if they're lined up. Otherwise, they could be on other sides of the sun and much further apart. So much, much bigger steps as we get further out. Now, to represent those rather vast distances, we go to the satellite. All right. So um, as far as uh, this, you know, this part of the lab, these last two columns, which I'm not going to talk about too much because I want to move on to the satellite. These ones are just going to be your actual objects because you need to find some actual object. It doesn't have to be precisely equal to, you know, the size you want. For example, my roll of tape, if it was five centimeters, I'd say that's close enough and I'd write that down and then describe what the object is. So in my case, I would write roll of tape. Okay. So then going on the number seven and the satellite image. So number seven asks, using the scaled orbital distances of each planet, okay, so such as the one that I'm showing you for example, right, this would be our example scaled orbital distance, all right, in meters, all right, how large um, and show how large each planet's orbit would be on an overlay to a satellite image centered on Solano, Solano Community College. Google, Google Maps works very well for answering this question. Okay, so let me show you why it works well. There's a great little feature uh, which is sort of hidden um, within, within Google Maps, not, not terribly well known. So if you have a location like this, now I've left labels on, which is good for finding things. I think that it's probably fine to leave the labels on. I don't, they don't, I don't think they're gonna clutter up your image too much. But if you click on an object, you can get things like directions and all these different, you know, find things nearby, information about the college, but we don't care about that. Instead, Let's go and instead, where did the college go? All right, let's zoom back in a bit. It should be right around here, right? There it is, okay? Instead, I'm gonna right click on it. So if I right click on it, it gives me pretty cool uh, information here. It gives me the latitude and longitude, all right? And then some of the same sort of options like directions and so on. But way down at the bottom is what we need, measure distance. Pretty cool feature built into Google. Great for things like science labs, okay? So it says measure distance. Click on the map to trace a path you want to measure, all right? Now this is, is not gonna be a walking path or a biking path or a driving path. This would be like a, a flying path, right? So it's as the crow flies or I suppose as the drone flies, right? Just a straight line. So notice, right, that one endpoint is already you know, selected and it says drag to change. So um, you initially you can just click. So I'm going to do a normal left click here and look, it set that distance. It set it right there at 4,770 feet. All right, 4,770 feet and then 0 0.12. Now, I don't want feet, do I? Well, it turns out you can easily change to the metric system. Again, kind of hidden here. If you go click down on the bottom and you just click that over, then it just changes over to the metric system, okay? So you can see that currently the line that I've drawn from the center of Solano College, what Google considers the center of Solano College, is uh, you know, to over here on this other side of Rockville Road is a distance of 1.45 kilometers. Now, that's not what I want, right? I wanted a distance um, for our example of, well, 0.556 kilometers, okay? Now, you know, in the, in the um, the table you would you would have written 557 meters okay I'll, well don't actually write that because again your sizes will be different but your you know when you're looking at google it's going to be in kilometers okay so and then i just now i do want to drag it says drag to change click to remove okay so i'm just going to hold down on it and i can move it around wherever i want so i'm just going to shorten it and it doesn't matter exactly what direction it sticks you know it sticks out i think kind of diagonal looks best and i'm just going to shorten it until it gets down to about that value all right, was it about 550? Um, it was 556, okay? So close enough for, um, for illustrative purposes. Well, I can't help but try to get closer. Ah, well, there we go, 557, right? Very, definitely close enough, all right? So there we go, that is about half a kilometer. Um, notice actually when it is a fraction of a, a kilometer, it did leave it in those units of meters, so just like on the table. So there you go, that is the scale distance from the sun to the earth. If your sun is the size of my office, my home office, and the Earth is represented by a roll of tape. And I mean, of course, the, the Earth being represented by a roll of tape is based off of the sun scale. 
so that's a cool thing about this is once we once you know I determine that the that my model sun is the size of my office, I've set the entire scale, right? Because you saw I was able to calculate the size of the model size of the Earth, and now the model distance between the two. Okay, pretty cool. Now of course as the distances get bigger, you'll just want to drag this out, all right, and so on. All right. Now um, in order to you know have have the different um, the different values on them. Let's see, so um, so click on the map to add your path. So let's see, I think you can add more than one. Let's see if we can do it. So 550, we'll drop, we'll just leave it there. So click on the, okay, so there, all right. Yeah, so now we have an, another one, okay? Now let's see if we can have both points. All right, so it's going to be all relative to the first one. Yeah, so it's like a, let's see, and if we close that out, can we, Okay, that that's okay. It's just gonna require so because I would say it would be best um, if you have it all on one image rather than a lot of images, and that's that's what I want to show you. So let's have five there we go, five fifty eight. Okay, then we're going to click a new one. So as long as you don't you know drag this around, then um, you will continue to you know add new points. Now you can't kind of you can't add them like spokes all coming out from the center, but you can keep adding them as subsequent lines. Okay. So when you add this next one, so now we've got the Earth location, then we'd want the scaled uh, location of, say, Jupiter, right? So we'd find the appropriate distance to Jupiter, okay? And then click again, let me zoom out a tad, right? And that, by the way, 1.33 is not necessarily the, the value for Jupiter based on my um, scaled factor, but I just want to you know, illustrate what it might look like. And then I would continue to do something for maybe, uh, let's go further out for Saturn, right? So see, now I have three points. First one for Earth, second one for Jupiter, all you know now at Saturn. And then I have to zoom out even more. If I wanted to show the real distant planets, probably not that much. But let's drag it over here a bit. And then maybe I'd have to go all the way over here to Klima to get you know, something like the distance all the way to Neptune. And then even further, they get the distance to Pluto. All right. So each of the little dots then are the planets, and you've got yourself a little model solar system. And of course, these dots are way bigger than the actual size of the planets because we know we'd have to zoom way in. In the case of Earth, right, we'd have to zoom way in, so much so that we could actually see an individual roll of tape, right? You know, good, you know, that's like you couldn't even see that in the satellite image if you wanted to, right? It would be too, too fine of a detail, which I think is a, a neat, right, a demonstration of, as I said, the solar system is mostly empty space, right? Right, and there's a tiny bit of really, really low density gas between the planets, but really mostly vacuum. Okay, so pretty cool. This would be um, kind of our scaled solar system. Now, if I wanted to actually put the image in here, a good way to do that um, on a Mac, of course, it would be very similar on a PC. You need some sort of screen capture or screen grab. I would probably just do something like this. Grab my image. Okay. And then let's have this uh, save it to the desktop. Why not? Okay, and then go over to my PDF document for the lab, and I'm just going to add an image. Now I'm using um, Adobe, which is uh, which you know you can get access to. Um, but you know, a lot any there's lots of ways to edit PDFs, so you can just whatever whatever way you choose to. Google methods for editing uh, editing PDFs. You shouldn't have to buy any program. You can definitely find a free way of doing it. But here I just need to add an image. All right, and we'll choose the image from the desktop. So let's find the one I want. All right, there we go, that's from a Zoom call, not what we want. And we can see that this should drop it right into the PDF. It'll choose where I wanna place it, and then we can actually scale it accordingly. All right, let's get, there we go, make it a little bit smaller, drag it over here, there we go. That's, that's how you answer this question, because here I do just want the image, but of course I want the image to you know, be accurate. All right, and if you choose to do it a different way and not use Google Maps, you're welcome to, but I, th I think certainly this is the most straightforward way of doing it. Um, the last questions are all about more calculations. For example, you need to calculate um, the scaled speed of light, all right? Again, it's, all, it's gonna be all about your scale factor. Make, sur make sure your units are right, all right? I don't wanna show you, show you how to do these ones, but hopefully by showing you the example of how to get one you know, scaled distance and one scaled size, you can you can think about how you would get a scaled rate. Because, you know, the only thing you need to change here is the kilometers, right? You just need to convert that to whatever is the scaled distance in, in your model, right? Which means that the speed of light in your model is going to be much slower 
right? It's going to be about a billion times slower than the actual speed of light, just like all the objects in your model are about a billion times smaller, okay? And then you're going to scale um, the distance to Alpha Centauri, right? This is pretty cool because the distance is 4.3 light years. Well, it turns out that a light year is a very vast distance indeed, right? It's uh, up here in the pre-lab, we see that it, in kilometers, one light year is equivalent to, let's see, so we have, oh, this is, this is where you're actually going to calculate it. Now you can, of course, look it up. A quick Google search can give you, you know, kilometers to light years. Right, you can really set, say really quickly, kilometers to light years, right? So if you ever do want to check the value, you can see pretty quickly that one light year is equivalent to about 9.5, so rounding there, 9.5, and then this is a form of scientific notation, which means times 10 to the 12th. So that would be 9.5 trillion kilometers, okay? So one light year is 9.5 trillion kilometers. Whoa, that's way bigger than an astronomical unit. Because remember, an astronomical unit was only about 150 million kilometers. Now we're talking about trillion. We've gone way past billion, all the way to trillion, okay? So you know how I was making a big deal about the empty space in the solar system? Well, the empty space between stars is so much more, right? The solar system itself is just a tiny little pocket of mostly empty space with a vast empty space to the next tiny little pocket around the next star. Okay, in this case, our closest neighbor, Alpha Centauri. Okay, so you're then going to find the scaled size of 4.3 light years. So convert 4.3 light years to you know, kilometers, then multiply it by your scale factor, and you've got the distance in kilometers, right? So um, then you want to put that value there and answer if it actually would fit on Earth, right? Could you actually build this model that would fit on Earth based on the size, or has it gotten so big that the model itself is actually astronomical in size, right? Maybe it is. And the last thing you do, you're going to do, is scale yourself, right? Because we're talking about all these huge things, stars and distances between stars and even planets, right? Even though planets are much smaller than stars, they're still huge to us, right? So how big would you be? So take your size in meters and multiply it by the scale factor and find out how big you are and discuss that at this scale, would you be bigger or smaller than an atom? And an atom is about 10 to the negative 10 meters, which is a unit which is often called an angstrom, a very, very small size indeed, but perhaps the model of you would be even smaller. Okay, so just further calculations and hopefully interesting ones. And that concludes this directional video for our Scaled Solar System Lab. I hope this has given you a good idea of how to get started, about, started on it and about why this lab is interesting. Thank you so much for watching. Bye for now.